Hello everyone, welcome to Business School 101. Picture a local coffee shop trying to pay its suppliers at the end of the month, or a small grocery store ensuring it has enough cash to cover rent and payroll. These real-world scenarios highlight a crucial question, can a business meet its short-term financial obligations? This is where liquidity ratios come into play. But what exactly are liquidity ratios? How do we calculate them? What are their major uses and limitations? In this video, I'll discuss these questions with you. Section 1. What are liquidity ratios? Liquidity refers to a company's ability to convert its assets into cash quickly to meet short-term financial obligations, such as debts, bills, or other liabilities, typically due within a year. It measures how easily a business can access cash without requiring additional financing or selling long-term assets. Liquidity is crucial for a company's financial stability, ensuring smooth operations and avoiding cash flow issues. Liquidity ratios are financial metrics used to assess a firm's liquidity by evaluating the relationship between current assets and liabilities. Section 2, Three Types of Liquidity Ratios Let's explore three main liquidity ratios in detail. Number 1. Current Ratio The current ratio is one of the most widely used liquidity ratios because it gives a broad overview of a company's ability to cover its short-term liabilities with its current assets. Current assets include cash, accounts receivable, and inventory, while current liabilities refer to obligations that need to be paid within the next 12 months, such as short-term loans, accounts payable, and taxes. The formula to calculate current ratio is following. For example, if a company has $200,000 in current assets and $100,000 in current liabilities, its current ratio is 2.0. This means the company has $2 in assets for every $1 of liability, which suggests that the company has more than enough assets to cover its short-term debts. The current ratio offers a quick view of a company's liquidity. A higher ratio indicates better ability to meet short-term obligations, reassuring creditors and investors. However, an excessively high ratio may suggest inefficient asset use. A low ratio, especially below 1.0, signals potential difficulties in covering liabilities and possible liquidity issues. Number 2. Quick Ratio the quick ratio, also known as the acid test ratio, is a more stringent measure of liquidity than the current ratio because it excludes inventory from current assets. The rationale is that, while inventory is a current asset, it may take longer to convert into cash compared to more liquid assets like cash and receivables. The formula to calculate quick ratio is as follows, for example, if a company has $200,000 in current assets, $50,000 of that are inventory, and $100,000 in current liabilities, the quick ratio would be 1.5, this means that, even without selling inventory, the company can cover its short-term liabilities. The quick ratio is important because it highlights assets that can be quickly converted to cash. In industries with slow inventory turnover, like heavy manufacturing, it offers a clearer view of a company's ability to meet short-term obligations without relying on inventory. Number 3. Cash Ratio the cash ratio is the most conservative liquidity ratio, as it only considers cash and cash equivalents, such as bank deposits, treasury bills, short-term government bonds and certificates of deposits CDs, in relation to current liabilities. Unlike the current and quick ratios, the cash ratio excludes both inventory and accounts receivable, focusing solely on assets that are immediately available to meet obligations. The formula for calculating cash ratio is as follows. For instance, if a company has $50,000 in cash and cash equivalents and $100,000 in current liabilities, the cash ratio is 0.5, this means the company has 50 cents in cash for every $1 of liability, suggesting it may not be able to cover its short-term obligations with its cash on hand. As you can see, the cash ratio measures a company's pure liquidity, which means its ability to pay debts with cash alone, without relying on inventory or receivables. While a ratio above 1.0 isn't usually necessary, a very low ratio can signal liquidity risks, especially in volatile industries. Section 3, An Example Let's say a company has the following financial figures, as you can see, the company's total current assets amount to $100,000, while its total current liabilities stand at $60,000. Based on this, the current ratio is calculated as 1.67, indicating that the company has $1.67 in current assets for every $1 of short-term liabilities. To determine the quick ratio, we exclude inventory from current assets since it may take longer to convert into cash. 
After this adjustment, the quick ratio is 1.33, reflecting the company's ability to meet short-term obligations using only its most liquid assets. Finally, the cash ratio, being the most conservative liquidity measure, considers only cash and cash equivalents. To calculate it, we exclude both inventory and accounts receivable from current assets. As a result, the cash ratio is 0.83, meaning the company has enough immediate cash to cover 83% of its current liabilities. Section 4, Importance. Understanding the liquidity ratios is critical for the following reasons. Number 1. Financial health. Liquidity ratios help determine if a company can meet its short-term obligations, such as paying suppliers or covering loans. Number 2. Decision-making. These ratios provide insight into a company's financial stability, helping investors and lenders assess the risk of doing business with the company. Number 3. Crisis management. Companies with strong liquidity are better equipped to handle financial shocks, emergencies, or sudden market downturns. Number 4. Operational continuity. Healthy liquidity ratios ensure businesses can continue day-to-day -day operations without disruptions from cash shortages. Number 5. Efficient asset management. High liquidity can indicate a strong cash position, but excessively high ratios may suggest inefficient use of assets that could be better invested elsewhere. Section 5. Limitations. While liquidity ratios are valuable, they have limitations. Number 1. Industry variations. Liquidity ratios differ across industries, making comparisons difficult without considering industry-specific norms. For example, a tech company may have a higher quick ratio than a retail company, which relies more on inventory. Number 2. Snapshot in time. These ratios reflect a company's financials at a single point in time, which may not capture ongoing cash flow trends. For instance, a company might show a strong current ratio at the end of the quarter but struggle with cash flow during other months. Number 3. Focus on short-term, liquidity ratios only assess short-term assets and liabilities, overlooking long-term financial health and profitability. For example, a company could have a high quick ratio but still face challenges from long-term debt or declining revenue. Section 6, Summary. In conclusion, liquidity ratios measure a company's ability to meet short-term obligations using its current assets. The current ratio gives a broad view of liquidity, the quick ratio offers a stricter assessment by excluding inventory, and the cash ratio focuses on pure liquid assets like cash. These ratios are crucial for investors, creditors, and managers to evaluate a company's immediate financial stability. Alright, that's all for today's topic. I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more insights on accounting and financial analysis. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.